Hey everyone, this is DJ. I run the machine learning consultancy, Truth Data. And in this video, we're asking, what is going to happen to AI models when their training data is produced by previous AI models? We have to answer this question because the amount of AI generated data on the internet is exploding and it's only gonna become harder and harder to differentiate AI data from real data produced directly by people. The reality is people make money with content and AI produces the cheapest content. So we should expect this trend to continue. Also, there are almost no digital environments which are fully insulated from AI. It doesn't matter where you came across a written paragraph on the internet, you can't be sure it was authored by a human. And in all likelihood, the probability that it was authored by a human will go down over time. Now, this is a channel about machine learning. So we're gonna leave the dystopian imagery of an AI synthesized internet aside and instead focus on the serious modeling challenge that this creates. I like the analogy of a snake eating its own tail. The snake is the model, and let's say its length is the model's intelligence. The snake can get bigger by consuming prey, and the model gets smarter by consuming real data. But the snake can't get bigger by eating itself. In the same way, the model can't get smarter by consuming its own output. And historically, the internet is the real world for AI models. So as it gets loaded with AI-generated data, and the models are trained on that data, it's as though the snake is eating its own tail. Slightly more technically, pretend these points represent real-world data. Now, we fit a model to it. Next, we throw away the data we just used, and then we sample from the model we just fit, giving us more data. You notice this data isn't quite like the original data that we started with. Next, we repeat this process. We fit a new model to the data we just sampled, we throw away that data, and then we sample from this new model a new set of data. And then we repeat this process continually, creating generations of synthetic data and models trained on that data. What we're seeing is that over the generations, the models make tighter and tighter predictions without getting more accurate. This is the fundamental problem. Though this demonstration is a little bit of a cartoon, so let's get more serious and take a look at the research. For this video, I surveyed a dozen or so papers on the topic. They use the term model collapse to refer to models failing or degrading from training on their own outputs from the past. More broadly, all the papers use intuition, theory, and or empirical results to speculate on the difficult question of what happens in the future. That is, what happens to models when all their training data is massively contaminated with AI outputs? Now, there's a lot of debate around this question. Several papers all but directly contradict each other. Some think it's a massive problem, others think it can be managed. So to reveal some pockets of scientific consensus, I find the following two questions to be helpful. First, what is the definition of model collapse? And second, what is assumed for model retraining? My claim is that papers mostly disagree on how to answer these two questions. But once you answer them for yourselves, much of the scientific disagreement disappears. So let's go over the choices. First, for model collapse, there are two definitions. One says model collapse is any degradation in performance. That is, we have model collapse if there is any consistent material performance loss relative to the benchmark of using all real data in your training. The other definition of model collapse requires divergence. That is, the performance gap between using real and synthetic data blows up. As you can imagine, these are quite different standards for performance impact. Next, for model retraining, the authors are interested in a retraining procedure that approximates the process of data being spewed out onto the internet and getting used down the line to train models and for that process to repeat many times. Now, since the actual process is massively scaled and involves almost the entire economy, it has to be seriously simplified. One assumption is that of an accumulation process. That is, future training data is an accumulation of both real and synthetic data. That makes sense, but it assumes our training compute budget grows with the size of the internet and that's not entirely reasonable. So the fixed compute budget alternative is to replace, where synthetic data replaces real data in the training data. So these two questions define a grid. Again, my claim is that the literature disagrees on the best cell within the grid, but once you pick a cell, there's much less debate. Now, as an example, in the linear regression case I showed earlier, we were 100% replacing the training data on each round, and we saw a divergence in model performance. The model became increasingly confident in inaccurate predictions, which is a type of divergence. Okay, so with this framework, let's get into a few of the papers. We'll start with a paper that introduced the concept of model collapse, called The Curse of Recursion, Training on Generated Data Makes Models Forget. This is the one that set off the debate, and I'd put it into the divergence replace category, though it's not a perfect fit. 
The paper builds some intuition about this recursive training process using a toy case of a normal distribution, similar in spirit to the regression case I showed earlier. Essentially, they show that you get random walk behavior in your parameter estimates over time, which means they drift away from the ground truth data. Now, this is a toy case, but they argue this phenomenon is universal across models, whether they are language models or image generation models or something else. Okay, but before we get into all that, let me tell you about my new sponsor, Hudson River Trading. If you're interested in the topics you hear on this channel and want to test your skills against the relentless but rewarding beast that is the financial markets, you should apply to Hudson River Trading. Now, personally, I used to work in quantitative trading, so I've known about them for quite a while. It's one of the reasons I was happy to have them as a sponsor. Now, they've been recruiting top machine learning talent since before it was cool, and now they're looking to grow their team with those who are ambitious, technical, want a good challenge, and want to get paid well for solving it. And let me tell you, the challenges are deep and interesting. These are things like finding predictive signals in petabytes of noisy data, scale and compute with distributed systems, designing custom hardware, or optimizing C++ or Python code for super low latency computation, and designing, building, deploying, and monitoring machine learning models for real-time decisioning. So, if you think you could take a good crack at problems like these, check out their link in the description. Okay, back to it. To demonstrate, they experiment with variational autoencoders, or VAEs. These are models which are used to reconstruct their input following some compression, and in doing so, provide a generative model over those inputs. So, if you're given handwritten digits, you can use a VAE to generate more handwritten digits. But, if you use these as training data, things start to fall apart. This is divergent model collapse. Starting with real data, predictions collapse into a singular, meaningless prediction. And something similar happens with language models. Essentially, they show empirically that models forget the long tail of real data. They lose information about rare but real sequences, and they start generating more high-probability sequences. Also, they erroneously create a long tail of fake sequences, made from accumulating and combining errors from previous models. More intuitively, they show how over the generations, a large language model begins to ignore its input and litter its response with high probability tokens. For example, here an input is given, and for the model trained with real data, it produces a reasonable answer. But by the ninth generation, the model is spouting repetitive gibberish. Again, this is model collapse. So this paper set off a pretty big debate. And that's because it paints a pretty bleak picture. So let's move on to a more optimistic paper from a different cell. It's from the divergence accumulate cell. The paper is called, Is Model Collapse Inevitable? Breaking the Curse of Recursion by Accumulating Real and Synthetic Data. They say that replacing real data with synthetic data is not a reasonable proxy for what we'll do in the future. Instead, they assume real data will continue to accumulate alongside synthetic data. They communicate this with this graphic. If you throw away real data and use just synthetic data, indeed, your test performance will degrade radically. But if synthetic data appends enough old real data, divergent model collapse can be avoided. That's their main claim. To show this, they did some experiments on language models. We see that the test loss is not diverging in the accumulating case, and in fact, continues to improve with each generation. Now, for their experiments on variational autoencoders, they observed some degradation. However, since their definition of model collapse is a diverging test loss, this still counts as avoiding model collapse. Overall, given how they define things, I don't find their claim to be hard to accept. You can avoid the divergent case of destroyed model performance if enough real data comes along for the ride. Okay, sure, that sounds right. Now let's move on to the degradation definition of model collapse and an assumption of an accumulation retraining routine. In this case, we just care about any consistent model degradation, and we allow synthetic and real data to accumulate together. And that brings us to the bold, strong model collapse paper. I say it's bold because it claims it only takes a little synthetic data to give you model collapse, albeit they're using a lower standard for what counts as model collapse. They also say bigger data won't fix this and have theorems to support that. Now, anytime you see proofs in these papers, they always start from a highly idealized setup to approximate the future of retraining AI models on model outputs. So that warrants a large grain of salt. 
Still, what they prove is interesting and relevant, so I'll give a rough sketch of it. Essentially, this setup assumes a mixture of real and synthetic data and considers a simple linear regression model on top of it. Specifically, they assume two data generating processes. One is the real distribution and the other is the synthetic distribution. They both use the mathematically friendly multivariate normal to generate features and a linear function plus noise to generate targets. Now, if the model is really good, the synthetic data will be generated by the same distribution that generated the real data. This would be like having a very good model. If the model isn't so good, the distributions are different. And this disparity is controllable via a value they call C squared. Then, in a theoretic sense, they study the test error of a regression model using this mixture of real and synthetic data as the training data. Now, what's important to note is this test error is only with respect to the true real data generating process, not the synthetic one. Next, they prove what happens to it in various limits, like what happens as the data set grows to infinity or the dimension of the input grows, all while maintaining certain proportions as fixed, like the proportion of synthetic data to total data. And in this way, they are addressing both the retraining scenarios of accumulate and replace. Now, what they prove is in regards to the bias variance decomposition. Let's revisit that concept in the vanilla case without retraining on model outputs. Here, the blue line is the true real function we're trying to learn. And each green line represents one model fit when it was given a sample from the real data generating process. Now, when there's no synthetic data, the bias variance decomposition says that the test error is made up of two components. The first is how much the model is wrong on average over many training cycles. And the second is how variable the model's predictions are across those retraining cycles. The trade-off refers to, as you vary the complexity of the model, these two components trade off. And there's a sweet spot where test error is minimized. But what they prove is that when you have synthetic data, you get an extra positive term in the bias variance decomposition. This extra term is model collapse. Then they show how this has implications for scaling laws. This suggests we need to revise our thinking about how models will scale with future data if that data is corrupted with model outputs. Further, they extend a linear regression case to the world of neural networks by using something called random projections. They rely on a theorem that says a neural network can be recreated by a linear model via randomly projected features. And so they use this to create a bridge and then they can get an analogous bias variance decomposition theorem in the more complex case of neural networks. And neural networks include things like language models. Beyond this, they also run experiments confirming their intuitions that follow from these theorems. Overall, my takeaway is that there are solid theoretical reasons to believe that synthetic data is bad for a model, and the rest of the literature largely confirms that. Next, we should cover the degradation and replace case, but this is the most uninteresting. Degradation is the lower standard for model collapse, and replace is the most destructive retraining routine. So of course, if you use the most destructive retraining routine, you're gonna get at least some model degradation. My point is, this is not really an interesting case to consider. So let's review the main takeaways. First, training on model outputs is inevitable, given how things are going. Second, that training will degrade performance. Real data is better than synthetic data. Next, retraining with synthetic data creates degradation in a few ways. First, models lose information on rare but real events. In other words, the long tail of real possibilities gets lost. Second, retraining on model outputs amplifies statistical errors from previous generations. And lastly, we get positive feedback loops, where the probability of high probability events gets exaggerated. From my reading, this is all pretty well supported. In fact, the literature I haven't mentioned mainly supports these claims. At least two papers express model degradation in the form of upward adjusted scaling laws. In other words, we need to extrapolate more conservatively if future data is going to be corrupted. Also, at least two papers show model degradation empirically in image generation models. And as an aside, from the paper on the left, I particularly like figure four because it shows the problem so clearly. And lastly, at least two papers show that retraining language models reduces the diversity of natural language data that they produce. All that said, there's plenty of disagreement. As mentioned, people disagree on what model collapse is and what is the best proxy for our future of training on model outputs. But there's more than just that. Everyone may agree that synthetic data is to some degree a problem, but few agree on the solution. 
One thing that is clear is that it's important to separate synthetic data from real data. But how do you do that? Things like watermarking, where models hide signatures in their output so that they may be distinguished from real data, aren't perfect fixes. They have false positives and false negatives, can be removed quite easily, and the watermark will likely be kept secret by some company. Another idea is to just directly correct for the problem. If the problem is that the AI-generated data is too concentrated, then let's just reweight that data such that it maintains the spread from the original real-world distribution. Well, that might help, but this will be limited by how good our measure of variability is. In other words, that measure will be imperfect, so the solution will also be imperfect. Intuitively, models are always smoothing things out. They take fancy averages, essentially. So measuring that everywhere and undoing it is likely too hard to be practical. Probably the best solution is to just preserve what's worked in the past. Maintain high-quality human-generated datasets, like Wikipedia, Stack Overflow, and scans of books. The problem is, no matter what writing medium you think of, it is unlikely to be protected from AI-generated content. But at least, at this moment, we have another reason to protect some content from AI pollution. As a final note, I'd like to make some predictions about where this is all going. But first, let me remind you about Truth Data, my machine learning consultancy. What we do is specialize in model development. So we work with companies that already have their data in place and are looking to develop algorithms to get more out of that data. Our clients have included startups, large retailers, logistics companies, and financial firms. If this sounds like your company and you think we could help, you can email me directly at dj at truthdata.io to schedule a call. Otherwise, just keep us in mind. We love referrals. All right, on to the predictions. Now, this is where my optimism shows a bit. First, even though the internet will be increasingly loaded with AI slop, the tech companies know about this and will make serious efforts to protect against it. They'll mount a layered defense, including algorithmic solutions like watermarking and AI detectors, and also partnerships with companies that can guarantee to the best of their ability, human-authored first-party data. So with a layered approach, AI companies will accrue and protect real data. However, a consequence of this is that high-quality, verifiably real data will become a separated, valuable resource. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if companies emerge whose sole product is curating, auditing, and certifying real-world uncontaminated data. That said, the problem of model collapse won't be totally avoidable it'll contribute to a slowing of AI progress. Now, there are a lot of factors determining the future of AI model performance, so I won't be too specific here. But for this reason and some others, I think we'll see more shallow gains in model performance over the next three years. Okay, that's it. I'll see you next time.